about what makes your aims page stand out from the crowd. So if you're new here, if you're new to me, I'm Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and I help early career researchers who are applying to NIH. So let's talk about aims pages and what makes your specific aims page stand out from the crowd. So remember that in your aims page, you're providing a 30,000 foot view of your proposed research, a high level view of your proposed research, right? This serves a couple of purposes. The first purpose is to orient your assigned reviewers to what they can expect in the full research plan where you'll go into a lot more detail. The second purpose is to provide an overview of your project for those non-assigned reviewers who are very unlikely to read your full research plan. And they'll have that quick overview to quickly come up to speed on what you're doing without having to read your research plan in depth. So that's your objective with your specific aims page. And let's talk more specifically about a few different components that really make your aims page stand out. So number one is context. And that is really about having a clear description of the bigger picture problem that you want to solve with your research. So you always want to make sure that you are situating your research within a broader scientific or clinical or population level problem that you're trying to solve. It's something that you're working towards over the longer term. It can't possibly be solved in any one single grant application. And the reason that you want to provide that context is to help reviewers understand what the bigger picture is. What is this one uh, research proposal that you are proposing? What is that going to help you ultimately achieve? And so you want to make sure that you're providing that context so that reviewers can see that bigger picture and see what you're on your way to achieving. The second thing that will really help your specific aims page stand out is cohesion. And that's really about having a link between the bigger picture problem and the objective of the research that you're proposing. So in other words, how will the outcomes of your research contribute to solving that bigger problem? So you're connecting the dots for your reviewers by explaining how what you are doing uh, with your objective, what your objective is, how that's actually gonna help you solve that larger problem or contribute to solving to that larger problem. Number three is having compelling aims. And I know this one might seem obvious, but let me explain a little bit more about what I mean here. So in general, and there are exceptions to this, but generally speaking, your aims are supposed to be thematically linked, but experimentally independent. And taken all together, those aims are gonna help you meet the objective of your research. So one aim on its own is not going to allow you to meet the objective of your proposed research. Uh, if you have three aims, even two of those aims are not going to allow you to achieve the objective of your research. But if all three of your aims together, for example, if you're proposing three aims, all three of those aims together will allow you to achieve your objective. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about compelling aims, is that there's a clear link between uh, the overall uh, impression that your aims are giving in terms of solving that overall objective. Number four is clear outcomes. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see on an aims page is there isn't any sort of wrap up at the end or, or summary at the end of the aims page. So most PIs end on their very last aim and that's it. They, you know, they kind of leave it at that. And it's like, well, okay, there you have it. Um, but you always want to tie it together for your reviewers. And the best way to do that is by having a short paragraph at the very end of your aims page that summarizes what your research will achieve if everything goes smoothly. And of course, you should assume that everything's going to go smoothly. And you'll explain how you're going to make sure everything goes smoothly in the research plan. But on the aims page, you always want to make sure that you're tying everything together at the end and saying, look, if everything goes to plan, here's what we're going to have at the end of this research project. And you want to make that really, really clear. You don't want to leave it to your reviewers to assume that by reading your aims and figuring out what your project objective is, that, that you'll arrive at those expected outcomes. You want to spell it out. Okay. So if you can nail those four components, the context, the cohesion, the compelling aims, and the clear outcomes, your specific aims page will definitely stand out from the competition.
So if you found this helpful and you're looking for a bit more support as you draft your Ames page, we have a more in-depth lesson on Ames pages inside our free resource library. And you can find the link to that uh, free resource library in the video description. So you click on that link, you add your name and your email, and you'll get access to the specific Ames lesson along with a whole other set of lessons that will help you write stronger, more compelling and clearer NIH grants. So that's it for today and I will see you next time.